Hi everybody, I couldn't be with you today, but this is my way to virtually explain the normal distributions to you. You want to take notes in the packet from yesterday where it says the empirical rule or the 68-95-99 rule. Go ahead and find that packet from yesterday and find the part where it talks about the empirical rule. Now if you remember yesterday, we made a normal distribution of the class ages and we had an average of around 16.45 in other words in all three blocks the average age was 16.45 and our standard deviation was somewhere near like a 0.57 or a 0.58 so I just rounded up to a 0.6 that is that our mean median and mo were right around the same that if we were to line up all the students in AP psychology most of the people would be lining up around 16 years old. Me And we really had a lot near 16 and 17. So that's where we get this average of 16.4. And the average difference, the standard deviation, was not very big in our class, right? The average difference was the range was only from 15 to 18. So we didn't have a great difference between students as a group. So here my center line represents age 16.4 and I have a fewer people who get close to age 18 and very few people who are as young as 14. So if I stop and ask just 10 people out of the 76 that are in our class, we won't necessarily get a normal distribution because 10 people is a very small sample size, right? Remember what we said about small sample sizes, they give us extreme results. So a few people are 16 or almost 17, somebody's almost turning 16, somebody's almost turning 18, we get all different ages. But if I stop and ask 100 people, which is a little closer to what we have, around 76 students, I'm much more likely to get a normal distribution. A lot more people near the 16-17 mark, maybe one person near the 15 mark, and maybe one or two people near the 18 mark. So this is just to give you an idea that the larger your sample size, the more normal, normally distributed it will be. And in fact, statisticians say that all large samples basically have normal distributions. So let's just pretend, for ex example, we asked 10,000 juniors and seniors how old they were in the state of Pennsylvania. So 10,000. This is 10,000 juniors and seniors. How old are you? And we're going to get, again, a much more normal distribution. A lot of 16-year-olds, a lot of 17-year-olds, a few 18, a few 15. But we see our normal distribution and how it looks. Okay. So hopefully you have found the paper from yesterday where you're going to be writing about the empirical rule. Now the reason why we talked about a large sample size and getting this normal distribution is it does relate to this empirical rule. So on your paper if you could draw a line on the bottom just to give you a guide you're going to try to draw a bell curve or a normal distribution above this line. You'll start close to the line with your pencil and then make a big crest where the mode or the most amount of people score and then come back down close to the line. As best you can, try to make it symmetrical. It's not going to be perfect, but be, be as close or as precise as you can. In the center of this bell curve, you're going to label the center, the measures of central tendency where the mean, median, and mode fall. You're going to label that Z score zero. The measures of central tendency, again, where the average and the most people score and the middle number is, is always labeled z-score zero because now we're going to compare how many scores fall above this mean, median, and mode and how many scores fall below it. So everybody you have your center line z-score zero. Now remember that the standard deviation is the average difference between the scores. So the first standard deviation you're going to draw a mark one standard deviation away just kind of give it symmetrical space as best you can above the mean, go one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. You're going to label the standard deviation above the mean z-score 1, that's the average difference between the scores, and then you're going to label the standard deviation below the mean z-score negative 1 because it's one standard deviation below the mean. Now draw your second marks which are going to be two standard deviations above the mean z-score 2, and two standard deviations below the mean, 
C squared negative 2. And then we're going to add a third line to be the third standard deviation above the mean, z squared 3, and the third standard deviation below the mean, z squared negative 3. Thanks. And I know a lot of you in statistics already know this rule. Great job. Thanks for bearing with me. There are some people who are learning it for the first time. So before we get the colored pencils to color in this empirical rule, I'd like you to take a moment with your regular pen or pencil that you've been using today and just label the inside of the first, second, and third standard deviation, 34, 14, and 2. That's 34, 14, and 2. The first standard deviation is 34. Second, in between the first and the second is 14. And in between the second and third standard deviation is 2. 34, 14, 2. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side with our regular pen or pencil. 34, 14, and 2. Okay, so everybody, you should have a normal distribution of what's called a bell curve. One standard deviation above and below the mean, you should have the numbers 34 in each one of those. Two standard deviations above and below have the number 14. And then three standard deviations above and below have the number 2. Now, if you're in stat, the numbers are actually 34, 13.5, 2 point something. And, but in AP Psych, it's enough. We can round and get the right answers with these percentages. If right now 34, 14, 2 make no sense to you, it's okay. It'll make sense soon. Okay, so now you're going to take three colored pencils because eventually you're going to cover, color over this 34, 14, and 2. And you're going to make the center the same. The second standard deviation away from the mean, you're going to make that the same color. And then the third standard deviation away, you'll make that a third color. So pick three colors that will work for you. And I'm going to talk about how you're going to color those in and take some notes. So again, this relates to the empirical rule. And the first part of the empirical rule says that 68% of the scores always fall within one standard deviation below and above the mean. So take one color, color in one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. Use the same color to do that. And then just label either above the bell curve or below that 68% of scores always fall within this range. Just to give you an idea of how this looks with a colored pencil, this person used green in the middle over their 34 and 34, and notice that 34 and 34 equals 68. So 68% 68 of the scores always fall within one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. Okay, so your two center Standard deviations are going to be the same color, and 68% of people always score within that range. In fact, 34% of people always score one standard deviation above the mean, and 34% of people always score one standard deviation below the mean. Okay, let's take our next color pencil and color the next section. Just pick a different color, and this is what 95% of the people will often score. 95% of people often score two standard deviations above and below the mean. So actually this blue, this color, whatever you end up using, I use blue, this 95% stretches across both standard deviations above and below the mean. That is 95% of the people will score within the first two standard deviations above the mean and within the first two standard deviations below the mean. Almost everybody, in other words, scores in this range. And then the final part of this rule, 68, 95, 99.7, is that the last bit of people, use a third color here, will score in the next standard deviation. So if we look under this bell curve, almost 100% of the scores will fall within this bell curve, 99.7. 68% fall within the first two standard deviations, 95% score within the first two standard deviations above and the first two standard deviations below, and then 99.7% of people score within the first three standard deviations above and the first three standard deviations below the mean. Okay, now using the little numbers 
will be really easy to memorize this. So rather than memorize 68, 95, 97, which you could do, it's really easy if you memorize 34, 14, 2. 34, 14, 2. Here's why. 34 and 34 equals 68, which we said. 68% of the people score within the first two standard deviations. 95% of the people score within the first two standard deviations above and the first two standard deviations below. Now we have the number 14 here because 34 plus 34 is 68 plus 14 and 14, which is 28, that gives us 95. 68 and 28 give us 95 or about 96, about so we're rounding. Now, if we add the 2% on the very ends to our 95, 96, we add another 4% and we're at 99.7 or around 100% of the people who will score this. So 34, 14, and 2 can help you answer any questions about what percent of people generally score in that range. 68 is 34 and 34. 95% of the people are 14, 34, 34, 14. That equals 95. And then 2, 14, 34, 34, 14, 2. That is 99.7% of the people will always score under this bell curve. Now, just take a look. Here's another hint. 34, 14, and 2 equal about 50%. So half of the scores fall on the left side of this bell curve. Half of the scores fall on the right. Okay, so you could take a look one last time. Half of the scores, about 50% of the scores, fall on this side of the bell curve. About 50% of the scores fall on this. So about almost 100% of people, will their scores will fall in this range. 34, 14, 2. 34, 14, 2. So let's practice. What percent of people score above one standard deviation above the mean. What percent of people score above this? Uh, in other words, what percent of people score above Z score 1? See, if you have the little numbers, this should be easy. 14 plus 2. 16 percent of people will score above Z score 1. What percent of people will score below Z score 1? Try to take a minute and add that in your head. What percent of people will score below z-score 1 in a normal distribution? 34, 34, which is 68, plus 14, which is 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and 2 is about 84% of people will score uh, below z-score 1. Now, just to make sure we're right, on this side we have... 14 and 2, we said 84, so another 16% would give us around 100%, so our math is right. All right, and just to end this lesson, I'm going to sing you a little song so that you can remember 34, 14, 2 in this empirical rule. All right, here we go. 34, 14, 2, in a normal distribution, it's half of the inverted U. 34, 14, 2. It's half of the inverted U. 34, 14, 2. It's about 50%. See? Here's another part to the song. 34, 14, 2. On both sides, it's an empirical rule. That was supposed to rhyme. 34, 14, 2. The empirical rule. See? 68, 95, 99. Okay? 34, 14, 2. It's a bell curve. It's not skewed. Get it? Ooh, I really like this. I just wish I could rap. And the last part of the song, 34, 14, 2, on both sides. It accounts for what we'll do. In other words, a normal distribution is really showing what percent of people are going to fall near this mo mode, median, and mean. And not many people score, right, three standard deviations above this mode, medium, median, and mean, and not many people score three standard deviations below it. All right, let's sing it one more time because I want this to stick in your head. 34, 14, 2, in a normal distribution, it's half of the inverted U. 34, 14, 2, on both sides of the empirical rule. 34, 14, 2, it's a bell curve. 
It's not skewed. 34, 14, 2. On both sides, it'll count for what we do. Woo! Great job, everybody.